Hello, today I'm going to show you how to fix the CDJ400 if the jog wheel gets stuck. Uh, it's a fairly common problem, the jog wheel is not a very strong piece on the CDJ400. I showed in a previous video, I'll make the link down there, that uh, sometimes these get stuck and how you can temporarily fix them. Today I'm going to show you how to permanently fix the problem. First of all, before you start, you need your CDJ400, a good clean working surface. Um, also, we're going to take this apart, so we'll be working with circuit cards. I do not technically have the proper setup for this. You're supposed to have you know, ESD mat. ESD means electrostatic discharge. A static electricity can damage circuit cards. Although you don't have to have an ESD mat, take certain precautions. Do not wear bunny slippers. Avoid static electricity, don't walk around on carpet, things that can cause static shock. Do not mix with electronics, so just keep that in mind. You'll need a small Phillips screwdriver, magnetic tip is a good idea, and also a couple flathead screwdrivers. I have needle nose pliers, I probably won't need them. So first thing you need to do before you start get some service information. This website is parts.pioneerelectronics.com. In the middle of the screen, it's asking to enter the part or model number. I'm going to type CDJ400. I'm gonna click on CDJ400 right here. And this is a parts list of all the parts. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to identify the parts. We need a diagram. So just click right here, parts diagram. This is a file you have to download, it's a PDF file. This is the breakdown parts diagram of the Pioneer CDJ400. This is a diagram of the jog dial section. This part right here is called the jog B. This is the outside jog wheel. Now the problem with my CDJ is this part will sometimes become loose and uh, get dislodged from its position and get stuck. And this of course causes certain problems during playback. Now this part actually snaps into the lens, which is this piece here. It has very small tabs. It's hard to tell by the diagram. But I've already got the part number, went to the website here, ordered the part, and here it is. Okay, before we start, lay down a towel just to prevent scratching the surface. We have the CDJ upside down. There are four screws on the bottom and on the back, the side with the jacks. We're going to remove these three screws here. Lay down and open the case. If we're interested in the jog wheel section. It's going to be in this half. So what I want to do is I want to separate this half from this half. So first things first, a couple connectors here. We need to disconnect those wires. There's one inside here there's a warning a sticker it says turn switch S2002 to short before disconnecting FFC it's talking about this circuit card here so if we were just to unplug this we might actually damage this card the switch they're talking about is located in the CD player section right here so we want to turn that to the short position so there it is, I just switched it. So now it's okay to disconnect this circuit card. Now this next part, when we unplug the connectors, we need to be very careful with them. This one here has some tabs you have to pull up first to unlock the cable. So they're kind of this darker beige color. I used a flathead screwdriver to release the tabs. Once they're released, you can pull the cable out. Same with this one. Next, what I just did is I removed some small plastic push pins to remove this plastic cable guide. There is a ground wire right here. The four screws on this circuit card are all silver, so are the ones for this cover. And then these metal covers also have one, two, and three, a hidden one in there, all silver. These ones are also silver. Once we take those items off, all the screws on the inside will be black. With this metal cover off, 
we can now unplug this connector. So gently pull on the connector, wiggle it, and it should come unplugged. This cover also needs to go. All right, now we have actually separated the two halves of the other cover off. Now we can disconnect this connector and remove this circuit card. This one does not have any type of latch, just simply unplug it. And let's carefully remove this circuit card here. Now keep in mind, this is a circuit card. So at this point in time, if you happen to be wearing anything that can cause static electricity, rethink what you're doing and come back when you're not doing that. Touch the table. If you have an ESD setup, you have an ESD strap, then you're good to go. Otherwise, touch the surface that you're working on before you touch the card. That way, you will not have any static electricity discharge. There's one connector on the back. Let's pull that out. This The cable just pulls out of the slot. Now, while you're touching the table, you can set the card down on the table. That's it, we set that aside. The next step will be to remove all of this from the case. I just removed a number of screws to allow this metal assembly to come out. Now we're looking at the main circuit card. This part also needs to come out. Some of the screws are already missing because we've taken them out. Well, a nice thing that Pioneer did is they put arrows on the actual card. So there's, there's an arrow next to this screw. There's a small arrow next to this one. Arrows. So this will help us reassembling the unit. The screws that have arrows next to them are the ones that get reinstalled when we go backwards and do this step. With all the screws removed, this circuit card can come out. First, we must disconnect a couple connectors. These connectors can be fragile, so use a flathead screwdriver to help pry the connector off. So we're just gonna gently pry up on this to help unplug it. What I just did is I pried up on the connector latches and pulled out just wire. There's one more connector here right here, we need to gently unplug it. Again, a gentle prying motion with the flathead screwdriver will prevent damage. Remove the slider and this selector knob and then everything should come apart. And there you have it. So this is the main control card, this is a display all these little LEDs are the lights that light up all the buttons. The next part here, what you see is the back side of all the buttons. Do not flip this over, they'll all fall out. What we're interested in now is the jog wheel assembly. We'll remove this from the CDJ. Four screws hold the jog assembly. Now the jog assembly is separated. This is the part we will be working on. First, remove the jog B assembly. That's the outside jog wheel. It's held in by several tabs around the outside edge. And it also snaps into the lens. So what we will do is just gently pry that out of place and it's off. The part I'm interested in is the lens assembly. This is the part that lights up. And the problem with mine is these little tabs, there's four of these tabs spaced 90 degrees apart, have wear. Just a little bit on the very edge and the result is this jog wheel assembly, the jog B, becomes dislodged during playback sometimes. So I have a new lens and all we're going to do here is just replace this lens. That's the reason we took everything apart. What we want to do is remove this assembly here. There's actually a little clip that holds the jog wheel onto the base. There are three screws. Pivot assembly right here that has a spring. So be careful not to lose the spring. It's actually inside here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this part. And okay, now this part comes off gently. There it is. There's the spring. This is the little pivot. This rests up against the center piece that rotates, you can kind of tell that rotates here. 
Now there's a little plastic clip. It looks like it's metal, but it's actually plastic. It's a very flexible plastic with a small slit right here. This is the clip that keeps the jog wheel on. What we need to do is remove this clip. So very gently with the screwdriver, pry this clip off. And there we go, the clip is off. You can pull the jog wheel out. Now notice this, there's a gear section here. It meshes with a gear right here and here. Now that we have the jog assembly off, the part we want to change is this lens. All I need to do is remove these four screws. It's just that simple. Took this piece off. Old lens, new lens. While we're in here, I'd like to explain the function of this hexagon shaped piece. This is the adjustment on the CDJ400 for the jog wheel tension. When you turn the jog wheel, there's some resistance. The higher the setting, plus one, plus two, plus three, the harder it is to turn the jog wheel. Thus, if you turn the jog wheel and let go, it will stop spinning sooner. This is good for mixing, this is good for beat matching. The looser settings, the jog wheel spins more freely, thus it is said to be better for scratching. You can adjust this. Uh, this can actually be done many steps ago without having to completely disassemble everything. I will show that in a different video. We install the jog B wheel. Take a look at the position of the tabs. There's a tab right here. Lines up with the slot in the wheel. Simply snap it into place while holding the platter, turn the outside wheel to make sure it is snapped into its correct position. It appears that it's in its correct place, the wheel spins freely. This is what we want. The jog wheel assembly is now in place. Before we continue, make sure all the buttons are in their proper locations. Once you've reinstalled the black screws on the main control card into the holes with the arrows. Check to make sure none of the buttons are stuck on the face. Next, two connectors, the jog assembly. Plug them in, reinstall the metal cage, the jog cover, and the other two metal covers. Make sure you've installed the screws in the correct places. There is enough room to get a screwdriver in there, a flathead, to help you plug it back in. Once we've done that, we'll put two screws here. This card's going back in. We need to make sure we gently plug this ribbon cable in. Push from both sides, first one side, then the other. Make sure it's all the way in. Place the card flat. The second ribbon cable plugs in on top. From this side, gently work it into place. You may use needle nose, but you must be extremely careful because you can damage the cable with them. With the plastic cable guide reinstalled, make sure the cable latches are up in the up position. Pry them back up with the screwdriver if you have to and plug the ribbon cables back in while holding the locks in the up position. So gently push it in. Once it's all the way in, lock it in place. Same with the other connector. Once you've installed all the screws, circuit cards in, all the connectors are done, you don't have any extra parts, make sure, and this is very important, that you move S2002, this switch, back into the open position. Remember, when we were taking the unit apart, we put it into the short position. Now we must put it back in the open position before you finish. So that's done. It's in the correct position. Close the case. Install four screws on the bottom and three screws in the back. Reinstall your pitch slider and your track selector knob. Plug it in, verify the operation, make sure everything still works. And the most important thing is, if you're not comfortable with any of these steps, or you're just sort of clumsy, don't do it. Do not take your CDJ apart. Let Pioneer do it for you. Thank you.